Hi everybody, hope you're all well. Mindful Moodling will be starting in a few moments, minutes. Well, you know how early I am. Anyway, just bear with me, the video is about to start soon. Thanks, bye. Hi everybody, hope you're all well. Mindful Moodling will be starting in a few moments, minutes. Well, you know how early I am. Anyway, just bear with me, the video is about to start soon. Thanks. Bye. Hello. 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 Oh, good morning. Good morning. So, yes, um, it's, oh, madness here. Madness, madness. So, uh, let me just sit down for a minute. So, hi, Tracy. Um, I'm okay, my lovely. And Rachel's here again, so me. Ooh, ooh. Oh, got Emma. Hi, lovely. Um, got Linda and Helen. And Facebook user. Makes me laugh when I have to do that. Facebook user, good morning, good afternoon. Um, yeah, I'm doing a, something a little bit different today. Because um, you know I work with Oakwood Archer. Um, and it's... You know more I, I do more than just drawing on papers and stuff and i've got a whole whole wealth of sort of different ideas that i use and one of them is um linen so this is the linen roll um i absolutely adore this you can get it in various sizes and if you look on the screen it's got 10 percent so let me get this little box to show you. I think it's in here. I think it's in here. Um, so this is basically the linen. Got a stitch on, paint on, everything. There's some more sizes. We've got one there, um, a thinner one, patterns. So you've got a whole range of these, and I really do use it. Um, I've got some little pieces that I've started to stitch on here. And uh, this is another type, same thing, but another type, and, you know, stitch on and do the rolls on. Um, this is what I made um, using the bunting. I made the fabric into a bunting. So, yeah, I really do use it. It's not like, oh, yeah, I bet she does. I bet she does. I bet she uses that. But I do. Um, some more. And I love it because it, it gives me, how can I put it, a really good basis for working on. So, yeah, it's, I'm just trying to see if I've got anything else. Um. I think that one was made into a cushion by the lovely Rachel. I found this box, so I decided that I was going to have a quick look in it, and lo and behold, there they are. So, yeah, you know, when I make journals and I make different things. So, yeah, you, it, this fabric can be made into, you know, multitude of stuff, a multitude. Um, so, so I don't want people to think of fabric as, oh, well, what can you do with fabric? Well, if you think of fabric as um, paper, then you can see there's a lot you can do with it. So these are like, like I say, made into different things. That was um, that's some got some gimp on that wire. Um, this was another batch I got uh, quite a while ago now. A lighter version, but this is the darker version. So if you go to Oakwood Direct, you will see that there's a 10% discount if you say Lou 10. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to work now. So I go to choose my width that I want. So I'm going to choose. Now it is um, that wide. Okay, quite wide. Um, I don't know if it's A4, but around about a4 so i quite like 
squares but i won't get a square out of this one folded but i will get a square if i wanted it to do it that big i would get a square um and i, I feel like unless i'm making a scrapbook that's a bit too big for me so we're going to go with something more manageable about there okay so i'm just going to chop that there okay and then Drop that there. Then what I'll do is put that on there. Now, I was always told to rip, but you know, it's it, to rip or not to rip is up to you. I, I personally like ripping, but I've just cut in for the sake of it. You seeing it rather than me ripping it off. Right, okay. So we've got all that. Put that away. As you can see, there's loads on it left. And there is my sketchbook done. So the first thing I do is just tidy up where I want. Now, with it being um, quite a rustic type of sketchbook, I'm not too worried about getting this neat um i'm just worried of getting some sort of finish to the edge now they are overlocked both sides but i rip one side so if you want to retain that which is a nice idea because you've got different edges there and if you want to stitch i would suggest you use this excuse me <clears throat> i would suggest you kept this so awkward archer you can get all sorts of different things from them um, and I wanted to show people that you can moodle with stitching, all sorts. I mean, I've got tons of stuff upstairs where I've moodled. So um, I've got even got a little one in there, I think. No, that's not mine. That's not mine. Can't get it. I'll get into trouble trying to dig that one out. Um, yeah, so here we go. Here's one not done. I'm going to start to do some moodling on some felt. And here's one I just did with black thread, stamped it, black thread, bit of um, spangles on, and that was it. So instead of using my pen, the needle became my pen or my paintbrush. So I'll put them downstairs. Downstairs? No, I'll put them down in that box. So I'm just going to move this. Now, if I show you the width, if you wanted to make this, oh, look at that. Sorry, I was burning it with my soldering iron and did that. Look at that. If you wanted to make a sketchbook that way, you could stitch it there or stitch it across here, and you've got a landscape version. But then what you do is you stitch, you draw, you paint, anything you want on this. There's no rules. There's absolutely no rules. Just like when you put your pen on paper, there's no rules to that either. You just do what you feel. Now, I think it's really important um, normally to gesso things, but on paper, you don't always need to gesso because um, on paper, you don't need to gesso if you want a watercolor effect. On this fabric, you don't always have to do that. So it all depends on the finish that you want. So I've got I've grabbed a pen. I'm going to be using a oh, um, well that that so far I'm not using any of them. Um, I'm getting down to my last ones when the big ones, you know, they run out a lot. Um, I'm using a five and an eight, so. Okay, so I've got my permanent pens there. I have got some Caran d'Ache, amazing, water soluble crayons, these are amazing. Um, I've got some Ecoline pens. I have got some white acrylic, some paint brushes, and my book. So, linen. Cut in half to the right size and then decided. Now, what I will do with this, if I wish, 
if I don't don't have to. They, they do have some smaller linen pieces, so I could use a small linen piece, or I could use perhaps this. I'll just show you what I mean. Just chop a bit off because them because they've got them from the same su supplier. You know you're going to get the same colour. So here, what we could do is when I've got it on my machine, I could bind it with that. I could either keep the edge rough. Actually, I like that side better. Could keep the binding rough. Or we could keep it neat. It's up to you. So if you wanted it neat, you could just do that. Or rough. You won't need the edge free, then that's it. And I would suggest getting a big needle, but I'm not going to do that yet because I need to stitch it. So there's one type, you know, and you can stitch it like that if you wish to make a better spine, but it'll be like a cloth spine, so it'll be quite usable. And then um, to get it on the machine, all I would do is stitch it down that way or hand stitch down there because you you're not you're not going to need like um, a huge amount of strength on this and if you get a button thread and just do it and then lob them off you know you, before you know it your sketchbook's made but I wanted to show you you know do's that I would do and I can't always get to show you this on telly because I don't have the time so uh, it doesn't matter what page you start on or where you start I'm going to start because you could have it as a, the front or back so before I stitch it I tend to like to draw on it first. So I've got the first piece. So the first piece is I'm going to see about um, say an introduction to my book. So there's lots of ways of introducing stuff. I'm going to start with like a couple of dangles here. So I'm going to get my pen. Come on, Wizards, what's up with you? you need a, they're all brushes. I don't brushes need to have a big sort out right so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to here now the thing is because you've got a warp and a weft you can just run your knife along those but that might be a little bit scary for some people so um, using a ruler is just as good so you could get a page or a ruler or a stencil anything you want and just draw so i'm just going to draw the first one so you can normally jiggle your jiggle sorry jiggle your um, pen and keep it in the groove so so i'll put my pen in like that and then So my first one's there like that. Then I'm going to put another one in. And you can do exactly like this if you've got a pen on and paper, anything. You can do exactly the same. So just some different lengths. Which, sorry, just going to put the pen on. Okay. All right, so I've got those lines there. You can just see them, but. I'm quite happy about that. It doesn't worry me in the least. So we've got this. So don't forget this linen is from Oakwood Archer. Uh, if you go to Oakwood Direct at the bottom, um, there's the link and you put the 10% blue 10. Blend up a bit of money off. So here, what I am going to do is just di diagonal one down. Can't say it today. Diagonalize diagonal lines so i'm just going to put a couple maybe one there like that then
It's like a trestle table. So here. So basically, I'm building a front page or an index or it could be anything you want. I'm just doing you like a what I would say is a welcome to my book. I'll, I'll stitch on it. I'll paint on it. There'll be lots of things I do on it. It won't just stay like this. It will it will start to look very different in the end because I'll be using um, all sorts of different patterns and now I'm going to try a pen. Oh, that's nice. So, a pen. This is a brush. Very under. If you've got a secure pack, you'll find that there is a brush in that as well. Brush nib. Yeah, so we've got this, and then I can just bring that in. So you learn something every day. So the pens are good, but the brushes. Because they're flexible, allow you to bend the knit more, and that hence hence you can sort of get more depth with it because it's going up and down. I need to get my little thing for this. So yeah, the the linen. Um, I've always used this for five maybe five years now uh, i love embroidering on it i'm embroidering at the moment i just love it because it's big enough the weave's big enough that we can get visually to see it um some weaves are that small you can't when you you're looking at embroidery so you need um something with a bit of width and you need to sort of be able to do sort of freehand stuff or cross stitch on it as well. It, ma it makes a great cross stitch. If you're as detailed as that, then it makes a great cross stitch. So I'm just going to start with adding some shapes. So I'm going to use these as dingle dangles. So, just to show you, I've set up the camera and the camera's set up so that we've got the actual focus, um, auto focus off, but they also that the it's set for this and not, um, I can't get near. So, You see you've got beads you could stitch on it you've got all these elements that you could then sort of extend it with and you know really mess about with all this i've even i've even felted on it 
So join these lines up a little bit. It's a very simple one. It's a great way for changing up what you do. It's a great way of mixing up your media. And if you're like me and you get a bit bored with one media, this is a great way of bringing all the others in. So you're not trapped in that, oh, I don't know what to do. Well, it's easy. Just get your pens out and mess about. So here, I'm just going to do light sections. Okay. Now, I'm pretty certain these have all been done before. So I'm not pretending I've invented this because I'm pretty certain that Joanne Fink's a good one at this. She does beautiful dangles. So what I've done is I've done the lines and each time I've gone up a little bit higher. So I've created like a um, squares, checks, lines. Um, and it just gives me, if I want to create more pattern in it, I can put more pattern in it. If I want to do more lines in it, put more lines in it. Um, okay, so I'm just looking now, my sketchbook, I've got the, I did many years ago, many years ago, I did a jellyfish and, and thing, and uh, what's the other one, jellyfish, oh, what do they call this? Um, oh, hats, and I did it with, um, on fabric and it's in my Etsy shop and it was a bestseller, I must admit. So yeah, it's very much a copied from that. So here we've got a heart and a So we're doing like um, an emblem at the top. You don't have to do this. Um, this is very much depending on what you want to do. See, just blocking it all off. Um, so got this I'm just going to go in with a round one now just to see if we can get some quite a round shape with it simply because I just think is it going to be easier with a round shape or is it easier with a you know a, um, a brush pen is it easier to make these circles or squares so I'm just doing squares along the the actual it's not I think this is quite a, a pretty way of going around um, envelopes and not envelopes well yeah envelopes you could do a little bit in the end but you know when you do um, picture frames and stuff like that it's uh, it's a very pretty way of... I'm going to darken some of them in so here we'll have And if you make any peat tongs, cool, just make it into the pattern. 
So along the lines, just. Stick to whatever pleases you. I quite like teardrops, quite like the little love hearts because they they do help to give it a bit of detail. It's entirely up to you. So on here. Put them in now and then so I'll put those in now okay and we've got the pattern in so let's have a look at how we can pattern I've not finished with them yet in fact a better ad now so better ad because I've just thought So I've done like zigzag lines, I've done like the dental moulding there. And I've done little zigzags in there. So what I'll do is I'll just put, it looks really good with gold and silver pens as well. So, you know, don't forget to get them out and use them. And then here, put some little dangles there. So the little dangles there. Uh, like, really, just quite simple, nothing. And these have got like the top there. So here we've got like that, bit of a ornate feel to it. Um, I think now, a bit here. This is so, this is also, it's quite poignant because this is how I'm feeling at the moment. I want to do something quite ornate. Uh, yep, drawing through stencils is brilliant. Has it? It will do, Emma. It lasts for ages, doesn't it? Absolutely. It, it's absolutely. Really, really worth buying. So, what I'm going to do is just put the odd pattern in there because I don't want to overpower it. So, I'm going to go with a heart, quite a quirky heart, maybe a thingy heart, and then we, we can have a big, big, big mama heart like that. I'll do different ones. So, I'm going to take some colours. And I'm going to see how this goes. I might paint halfway. All depends on how I'm feeling. But I'm going to see how this works. If it bleeds too much. But I've picked these because they don't bleed that much, actually. Um, but if you spray your, your, your linen at the end, it really does work brilliantly because it all bleeds together. It makes a fabulous, fabulous piece of art. So I'm 
I'm only doing one side and there's a reason because when I add water I can blend it out and I might not want to have it light and dark I might want to have it like shaded sorry um, or if I wanted to put a lighter colour on it like that I want to show you both so here put some work around these hearts here I think I'm going to stick to the hearts with this pink because I think it brings some sort of uniformity to it there we go I'm going to go in with a yellow. Oh, what have I found here? Boom. Boom. That's what I needed. Just what I needed. Um, these. Are going to be yellow. You don't have to be neat. Not the droppy droppy ones, but the the circles. That's that's a black one, I won't use that. So the circles are that colour. So here. Just looking. Oh, I'll put a couple there. Cool. Just got a bit of the orange there, which I'll do with a little bit of the green. Uh, the triangle, so. Any bits, I'm going to use the end of this to try and um, add any bits that I need. So the square there, I can put a square, fill it out there. Now, I knew it won't work. I knew it won't work in there, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to get out some colours. Right. So, just going to add a little bit of colour around where I need it. I don't need it everywhere, but just a little bit. So, I've got my paper towel, my brush, and the usual lid, she says. Oh dear, blockage. This is quite sick, this. This is because it, it's getting on a bit as well. It thickens up as it gets on. So, tidy bit of water. The less water, the better. Because what I don't want to do is add too much water. And because when you, you're using fabric, you um, should pre-wash it. But you should know me by now. So I'm just going to give it a really nice white wash. Nothing. I'm not trying to cover it all up. Perfect. That. There we go. That's a bit more saturated now. You can see, can't you? So it dries pretty fast as well. So, and this might look perfect, but it, by no means is it perfect. I 
And the reason I'm doing this, you can do it before, actually, if you want to. You can do it before and add it to. Um, and add paint over it. That's cool as well. You choose whatever you wish to do. So the inspiration for this is basically... I was looking through some of my books and I saw the jellyfish I did. And I thought, oh, I really like that. I'm going to do that. Right here, because I've got a little bit of decoration, I'm not going to go all the way dark, down, up, uh, light, down. I'm going to just take the edge, bring it down, and just brush over it so it's more faded like that. I'll do the same with these. It won't actually fade the pen. Uh, it won't take the whole pen away. You'll still see the lines, which is what I want. But it creates like a, a really nice line. Can you see? A really nice line. Because I wanted to keep the colour of the actual linen because it's so beautiful. Plus it's a neutral tone. So it's a base. It's a fantastic base for the rest of it. If you want to use stencils, that's even what a great idea. What a great idea. So don't try it like that. Yeah. So you might have a favourite colour. Come on with it. Oh, you knew you know what's happened, don't you? You heard it. You heard it. Yeah, well, everywhere. Always happens. You, normally I'm telling though, isn't it, when that happens? I'll be honest with you, this was the first lot I picked up, so um, sometimes it's not always what I use all the time. Can you see how it's dried and it's gone lighter? So if you want to go in and add a bit more. So again, the don't have too much paint on your brush and make sure that it's at the ends and not right up barrel um, but if you're going to do other stuff like you want to start painting at staff doors and um, machinery and that then use your you paint their way which is up the, up the, the length of it so here again Do with a thinner brush, really, but hey ho. Well, I really like the old feeling of just sitting down and colouring it. There's nothing quite like it. Inventing my own bits here. Cool. So if you go to Oak Wood Direct, that'll come off then. You can scratch it off and all, that's another thing, because it's not going deep into the fibre. And you can have a look at the other range of stuff they do, because don't forget, it's not only the linen that I bring on TV, I bring in all the other stuff. They've got the stamps, so you could stamp on this. Uh, you could use the fabric ribbons to bind it. So if you go to Outward Direct, you've got 10% off anything, not just the fabric roll. So it's worth having a look.
what's that saying in it? It's like it's like me going to Aldi. I go in for a loaf of bread, I come out with a fridge and a trumpet. So it's a treasure trove. I don't think you'd get a trumpet there, but you certainly get all sorts of mediums and mixed media stuff. And this is just right. This is absolutely spot on for stitching now. Because you've got a really, really good base. It's also good for backing as well because you get that much. Emma Austin, who's on my DT, um, she's said in the comments that she's got loads of it left. Loads. So, no, that's, uh, that's not me saying it. That's someone who's got it bought it actually so I'm just going to push this to the end I love using uh, paint on fabric because it's easy to use so I'll clean that off a minute that looks quite nice now I'm going to add a tiny bit of colour to this now. Not a lot. don't want a lot. So it's up to you how you do that. So I'm just going to put in here, I'll put the, the orange near the turquoise. So I've got a little bit of the orange there. Take the paintbrush. Can't see it very well, but I will put some more on. So, actually, I forgot about this. You could do this with it. Straight on. Clean your brush off. See it? So, get the green there. It's quite bright, isn't it? But then... So what I've done is adding the white to it actually gives it a really good base. Um, and you can blend it out, whereas if you add the colour to it, you keep you, you have to keep adding colours to blend it out. You see what I mean? So added the colour later. See this one? Might need a bit more. And if you get it on there, you must get that off. Because that won't be good on your pen because it's an acrylic paint and an acrylic paint will act like a glue and it will rough it it'll be just block it there we go that's better that's much better see i've got a bit of a line here so i'm not happy with the line so you can either blend more paint in or blend it out there we go i like that it's much softer now so let's go for bringing some colour on here. I think I might do it here. I've not got my fine brushes down here. Oh, found one. Right, found one. I'll have to put that under hot water to get rid of that. Right, you've only got a little bit of the pink coming through, and that's because it's dried. So we'll do the same effect again. So Clean your brush, uh, your nib brush. 
blend it out. There you go. You've got like a nice pretty pink. I think it might want a bit of red in it, a bit more pink. So I'll go straight in with my brush. You hardly need any materials for this. You could do the same as I'm doing if you've got ordinary felt tips. They work too. So, you know, you can use a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to see how these work using this. What will happen is it will bleed out now because it's fabric. But I quite like that. So here, I'm just going to put the white on. Like that. And I'm going to put just there. Not on the white, in between the white, can you say? Just in between the white. So I can do that here as well. So I've got that there. There we go. Now, I can leave them white because they look quite nice white. Can you see how the, the pink's swelling out? So, I'm going to put in some. Orange. I like to bring in the colours that I've used already next to other colours and then that way you get a nice blend. Here what I've done is I've added white while it's dried and just brought it out like that and again. I do think that needs more pink. Or even red. And if you do use red, nice one. Remember that when you use a white with it, it will go pink pastel. But when you stop doing this now, what happens is you get some great colours because um, you get pastels and all sorts of different colours so when it's dry you go back over with your pen like I've co covered over some patterns here which I weren't too happy with so I, I didn't want them so I can go back over with details got some slight colour mixes there and I quite like that so I'm going to make a bit more of it And I just need, can't believe it, well I can, I've got it all over me, you know, who am I kidding, of course I can believe it. Um, And uh, instead of just coming in with a, a green pen and then some white paint, just get some nice 
this is nothing it's not rocket science i'm not trying to say i'm the first one to do it certainly not but just think of using your fabrics think of using your stitching fabrics and your flosses as you would do your um coloring pens the paint is the paint regardless of whether you use it on paper or fabric if people say can you use this paint or fabric you can use any paint within reason on any fabric as long as you're not going to wear it because it won't need to be washed so you can use it so I, I hear this all the time and it amazes me of course you can use it on fabric you can use any paint any paint on fabric if you're going to wear it then you want fabric paint and i know indigo blue do a great one so now that looks really rubbishy but once it's dry and i put the black lines on just a good one. so but it has to be dry i've had so many people say it's gone funny well the reason it's gone funny my love is you've not let it dry so and it takes a while now it may come through and if it has should put like put a thing underneath it or i quite like that because then i either draw or stick something on it or i use that as another one but yeah you just simply use a, a piece of card to stop it from doing it see how going just going over the lines now neatens it all up so any dodgy bits that with dodgy bits on mine so any dodgy bits now I tidied up look shouldn't do this it's not dry I just shouldn't do it But you get the drift that it's very easy to just go over with your pen and neaten your stuff up it don't look as it don't look dodgy like you thought because sometimes you do stuff and you're like oh i can never get that right and some like these v balls these don't care whether it's wet or not because it's a rollerball, so they don't have any preference. You have to use an emery board when these clog up, though. So... It's all come together now. I've got a sheet here that I'm just cleaning with. I'm just going around them. Like giving them a double line just so that they look a little bit stronger. I think really there's not much more i can do from this now and perhaps in here i would put a line like this like that And just go with a so don't tell you do 
do dash, I think it is. I hope it is. Does uh, writing very similar to this, and I do like what she does. So this is a nod to Terry in the group. So she does like just a little bit of, she does the vowels, I think it is like that. And then she, every vowel has got that underneath or a letter that she chooses has got that. It's shorter with a diagram, on, uh, with a little emblem underneath. It's really clever what she does. I'm just bringing a little bit of the colour in. So I've got the green on. I've added the green to it while it's still wet. Add a little bit of the white paint. And you get a full colour. A bit more water than I would have thought that I needed, but never mind, it's just finishing off now. So this could be the front cover of your book. So take take a look at Oakwood Direct because um they've got lots to offer. You'll see Tina Barnett, lovely Tina, she works with them as well. Um so yeah, go over, say hello, put Lou 10 in and get money off because why not? You're going to do it. Get money. That's what I say. So, I'm just putting some dots in. This is my diary page. So it could be the front of my book. Actually, it might look nice as the front of my book. Right, so let's let's go back to what I did at the beginning. Um, I cut myself off the roll, some fabric from the, the big linen uh, roll. I've cut it. I'm going to stitch down the middle. I think this will be my front cover. Um, if you don't want this to happen, the, put a board underneath it or um, a board and a tissue to soak it. But what you can do is just stitch on that page. It doesn't matter. So if I put that back in now and then put that in there like that and then show you that with all that and a few bits and bobs messed about and messed about that's not the problem <laughs> oh why why did i do that anyway you can guess what i did yeah i did that yeah i did that um so you can get your colored pens out your felt tip it looks great i mean if we've got a white pen that works maybe <clears throat> Not that. Um, go along with all your pens, do all your designs. So, yeah, so go to Oakwood Direct and then um, it's what's that button there for? What have I done? I don't know. So, yeah, and if you would like to join me and see what else I do, if you go to lewithers.com, you'll see my website. Um, you'll see there that a Patreon, which allows me to continue with free videos because, you know, 
if it really does help me to continue because being self-employed, I, I can't live on air. Um, and while we're at this point in, in, during these circumstances, you know, you're not alone. We've got lots of time that we reflect together. And remember that it's it's all about um, bit reflecting and being together, being creative, um, and just thinking outside the box with your materials. So, yeah, so I'd like to say thank you, as always. And I will see you soon. I think it will be um, Tuesday. I don't think it'll be Monday, but I want to thank you for your support and uh, see you later. Do, 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 my camera has crashed, so it's still on. I can't, get, I can't stop the camera, guys. Oh. Sorry. Not letting me finish. Let's sing among ourselves. 